What up, everybody? It's iPadBeatMaking.com here today. Going to use Audio Evolution Mobile to try and make a beat. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to show you a few of the workflows that I've been using with Audio Evolution Mobile to really make it a viable DAW on iOS for not just doing audio, which I love it for, and not just doing the auto-tune stuff, which I also love it for, but actually making beats with it. I've come up with a few different little workflow hacks ever since the new drag and drop and copy paste was added to Audio Evolution Mobile. So with that said, let's get started. Starter template consists of something I call a MIDI runway. And I do this because every time I copy and paste from Atom or bring MIDI in from say Suggesture or any other app, AEM currently likes to reset your instrument. So say you were to put it on the Pearson Platinum channel that you see right here. If you were to bring MIDI onto this track, it would reset it to the stock stereo grand um, instrument. I, I believe it's probably a sound font. And we don't want that to happen. We want anything we uh, bring in to not alter our channel. So I use the MIDI runway track for any imports and this allows me to just drag and drop it onto this track here. And then from there I can bring it down to whatever uh, track that I want. So just something to keep in mind. And with all that said, we've got Koala here, we've got Pearson Platinum, Model 15, Drambo, Overdrive, and Lo-Fi Tape. There's no telling if we're actually going to use all or even really any of these instruments in our final production. This is just how I start the template in order to uh, get everything up and running and hopefully get inspired and get in the zone. So with all that said, let's get started. So I'm going to just go ahead and start with this one for now and kind of see where that goes. Another thing that I've got on this track is Adam Piano Roll 2. And another thing that I like to do is make sure that when, within the settings menu, I only allow a maximum of one armed track. And this helps alleviate confusion with what I'm actually recording how many tracks I'm actually recording on, how many sounds I'm triggering at once. So I do a maximum of one arm track at a time. Now, we've got Adam here. And what I like to do, because I am not a pianist or, you know, inclined with playing like that at all, I like to just select a scale. And um, let's say in this case, I go with, Lydian and then I map it to white so that way none of the black keys play and it just makes it easier to understand exactly where everything's at. Just something I like to do if you're a, a better pianist then you might want to uh, reject the outs. What I like about Adam um, is that it allows me to, I can play from here, but say I wanted to make the AU full screen, and I do this sometimes, like if I'm going to play a, a, like a melody or something, I'll... And while I'm recording, it will record what I'm playing on the side here. And, you know, just something to keep in mind, not to mention you can also draw in whatever you want with Adam, which, you know, is what it probably is really intended for in a lot of ways. So we could go ahead and, you know, um, count up seven semitones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And go ahead and start our chord and make sure we launch. All right. So what I'm already liking about Audio Evolution Mobile, as you can just tell from the start, is it's going to allow me to work 
a myriad of different ways. I could either go natively Audio Evolution Mobile with its piano without an AU MIDI effects on anything and go straight to its timeline, or I could use Atom with it to scale lock um, my piano right here. Or I could simply make the AU full screen and I could draw in this similar to like a FL Studio on desktop, not mobile, but I guess mobile too, but like an FL Studio style workflow that you see a lot of producers using where they're really heavily focused within the piano roll. And I actually prefer Adam over the native FL Studio piano roll besides the shortcuts. The keyboard shortcuts is a different matter entirely, but I like that we've got access to all of our um, scales so easily right here this long list of scales and that we've got our layers or our ghost notes and there's just so much we can do with an atom it's really really powerful and i think that it's the perfect complement to the audio evolution mobile workflow so with that said i'm going to um, start drawing in um, a few of these chords now i like to turn on the listen button right here and what that allows me to do is every time I select a note I know exactly what it's going to sound like without it playing back and we were just going to draw in and experiment and see what it sounds like got a decent starting place for our chord so first thing I'll do is um, go ahead and save this um, AEM beat one so we've got a decent decent starting place so we'll go ahead now and go to uh, our next track lo-fi tape here and we've got our layers Like I said, I can just go ahead and record.
So this is one way to secure the MIDI, which I always like to do is um, make sure that I get the, uh, the MIDI out. It's always important to me. But let me show you another way that you can get the MIDI out really easily. So let's see real quick here. All right, we got that going. Let's go ahead and export the MIDI copy it and now that it's copied we'll go ahead and go to our MIDI runway track paste from iOS clipboard allow paste virtual instrument and let's go ahead and bring that back down and we should now be good to go let's make sure that Adam is disabled so that we know that the MIDI is coming directly from our timeline here And I'm gonna let it play past it so that it we make sure it's coming from the timeline. All right, so that that uh whistle or whatever that is is still uh, on Adam, so it's gonna loop forever. But we've currently now got our pure synth platinum um portion laid out onto the timeline. We're gonna go ahead and copy, and we will paste it. So now we've got 16 bars of it on the timeline and we've disabled Adam, but it still will show up as a layer, which um, is helpful. So for uh, one more example of it real quick here, again, we're just gonna go export MIDI, then we're gonna go uh, copy, and then we're going to go to our MIDI runway. Let's make sure it's selected. Let's not make any mistakes. Make sure it's selected and that you see it right here. And paste from iOS clipboard, allow paste, virtual instrument. Um, and there the MIDI is right there. Go ahead and So we've got that uh, laid out now, and I'm going to go ahead and bring it to a point where it makes it easy to copy and paste and put my cursor here and we should be good to go now. And I'll usually bring a little before. So now we're just good. We've got a clean loop. And we'll go ahead and paste it in. All right. So now that we've got that done, uh, let's make sure Adam is disabled. It is. Let's turn the volume down on that. And uh, yeah, let's get to our next track. So yeah, with Drambo, one thing I uh, like a lot about it is it's a good place to host your 808s. Um, for me, that's how I feel about it. So I'll bring 808s from Splice or wherever else into Drambo and I've got my ADSR, I've got um, just so many different parameters, my saturation, my filters, uh, the glide amounts and all that just is real easy to manage in Drambo and the beautiful thing that I like about Drambo is it works with M1 Max as well that uh, if your DAW hosts AUV3, so that would be like Logic, that would be Ableton, and that would also be MTS Multitrack Studio on desktop. And even Audio Evolution Mobile works on desktop, but keep in mind it is a mobile app on desktop. So something to be mindful of. And I don't know if it actually will host audio units in it, something I gotta try out, but I do know that the actual app itself works. So we've got an 808 here and we can now go into Adam and I'm going to check out our layering and yeah, another thing I also like about Adam is it, it just handles layers a lot better to me than like FL Studio. You can see all the different colors of the layers, which I think is always nice.
So nice, simple uh, 808 pattern. Nothing too crazy, nothing too complicated. And um, let's go ahead and bring that in. Again, we will just hit export MIDI, copy, and then make sure, because don't just click here. Click it and make sure it changes to MIDI runway. You don't need any mistakes. Paste from iOS clipboard, virtual instrument, and let's bring that down to the Dramble layer here. And again, copy. And you don't have to do this. This is just how I like to work, just to make sure there's enough uh, data there to be arranged and all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and select these two. To select, we're just going to uh, press or tap or click and hold. Um, and then we're going to unselect and we're going to hit copy and we're going to go to the place that we want to paste and then hit paste and we are good to go. We've got MIDI data now 16 bars long and we may or may not keep this, but it's just how we're going to start it off. OK, and now we've got Koala and this is to me what makes this whole entire workflow very valid. Koala is now really able to be like a beat maker three wherever you go. So I've got kits made like crazy here within Koala. And let's just go to this one here and load bank A, go to B, load bank B, and we can sequence within Koala and um, it just is a really nice sequencer within your DAW. Let's go to, hopefully that's not too loud. Actually, let me turn that down some because I don't want it to be too loud for y'all. So you can use, um, if you've got your MIDI assigned to the, from C1, you could go ahead and use your piano here, but I'm just going to use the Koala interface because why not? So, go ahead. All right, so we've got our foundation, so I'm going to duplicate it. Double up. Double up again. And you got to stop it in order to kind of get Koala reset because we were duplicating bars on the go. So its starting point kept changing uh, while we were playing back. So now we're gonna play from scratch now that we've got it four bars and it'll stay in sync. And one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this piano right here and then I'm gonna choose a note. In this case, I'm gonna choose my hi-hats and I'm gonna hit this tab here, go to note repeat, and turn on the triplets, and now we've got our note repeat set up. Very, very simple to add note repeat to what it is we're doing. And to pop out of this note repeat mode, we're going to just hit this again. And now we are back in the regular mode of Koala. And I didn't turn the loop on, which I should have done. Let me go ahead and turn my loop on. These yellow points here that you see on either side are your loop points. It will angle towards the start and the end on this uh, triangle here. So that's how you know what's where. And with that said, let's go back into Koala. <laughs>
All right, so we've got um, most of our pattern done. We're going to now add our kicks in. So I'll go with this one. So we've got that kind of worked out. You can see I was kind of changing it on the fly within the piano roll. So that's a good example of how valid Koala is with its piano roll editing. It's not bad at all. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to just copy and uh, this thing across all these different instances. And you will see why in a moment. Now, first thing I'm going to do is um, hit the clear button. So I'm going to hit clear here. And then it'll ask me what I want to clear with these blinking. And I'm going to select um, pretty much everything except the kick. Go to B, hit clear. All right, so there's now we've got our kick here. And I will now go to clear, hit this again. And hit clear. Get rid of everything except the uh, the snare. And if you don't know where things are, you can just go um, by every pad and just hit clear on it. Now let's get everything except the hi hats. And now let's go ahead and get everything except this uh, this counter snare that comes in at the beginning. All right, and let's now get everything except for the um, Kind of the bongo or the conga. Let's see, let's get all that out of there and go to the next layer. Make sure we got that. And now let's get everything except for that little zap out of there. And I always like to keep a, a reference track of everything in its complete form, just in case I mess anything up in this process here. So um, we will now go to clearing everything else. Get rid of that counter snare. All right, and we should be good to go. Now, uh, what I like to do from here is it's a little slow, but it just makes sure that everything is right, and it's it's pretty simple overall. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, export current sequence mixed, and this is our kick, so I'm going to name it kick. I'm going to copy it. And we are now going to create an audio track and we are going to paste it from the iOS clipboard and bam, we've got our kick there that easily. And um, I'm going to go ahead and add another audio track in advance. Go back to Koala and we've now got our clap. So I'm going to hit export current sequence mixed and let's go ahead and hit clap and let's go ahead and hit copy and we can paste it from the iOS clipboard allow paste and there we go we've got our clap in add the rest of these tracks just so we're good go back to koala now And hit export, current sequence, mixed, and hats, copy, paste it from the iOS clipboard. We've got our hats. 
So you get it. Really simple, little slightly tedious. You can export everything at once and drag and drop everything in if you really want it to do it that way. That's fine too. This is just my preferred uh, method of working. It just uh, in real time kind of makes sure that everything is is right and I can catch any mistakes right there on the spot usually versus going and then through the file system and trying to figure out whatever. So we've got our snare here. And we know we're going to need another track. Let's go to Koala. Oh, Koala. And um, these are, let's say, bongos. We're going to copy. And then we're going to paste from the iOS clipboard. And finally, we've got to get our zaps. And Koala Sampler. Let's see export current sequence mixed and zap copy bring that down here and we're going to now paste it so we now have all of our koala drum tracks accounted for we can go ahead and copy them, um, then we can hit paste. Uh, clearly, I got the wrong one selected here. Let me see. I must have been tracked down. But we can go paste. And we've now got all of our drums in, so we can go ahead and make sure this is on a blank sequence so that it's not going to play anything back anymore extra measure you can mute it also but now let's hear what our beat sounds like All that's real loud at, uh, at first. I'll probably put that all these uh, tracks on a drum bus at some point. Um, and to do that, I would just add a bus here. Um, just add one. And let's see. Let's put everything on group two. And that way, just all the volumes can be managed at once a little bit better. And whatever effects and all that, I can also uh, manage them all together as well. Let's rename the group to Drum. And we've got a... a um, our drum bus set up now, so let me go ahead and turn it down. It's a little loud. All right, let me turn this piano down too. kick up just a little bit and on the effects grid for the hi-hat I always like to add um, just to make the hi-hats a little bit more interesting pan flow 
I always like this uh, this effect, kind of auto pans your hi hats. I don't like them in the extremities at all, but I like to, uh, you know, just have it go over just a little bit. Probably put it on the zap also make that more interesting So that's a, a cool little cool little start to something. Nothing serious, nothing crazy, but a cool little start to something. All right, not really filling anything in overdrive, so I'm going to pick a different synth. Let's see. What else can we go with here? export that and copy and again make sure our MIDI runway is selected paste from iOS clipboard allow paste virtual instrument I'm gonna bring that onto the track um, right here where sample Tron is turn it down just a little bit <laughs> see here I think we're a little early on one part I turned the quantizing off I didn't realize we were that early so now's a good time to demonstrate what we can do within the piano roll of uh, AEM native so the top here we've got our triangles we can go ahead and move these these little brackets are like handlebars so we'll go ahead and use those to adjust the MIDI as we've just done and let's hear how it sounds <laughs> And then we can go ahead and let's extend this out to make sure it's four bars. Go ahead and paste our MIDI in. And I'm just going to paste everything to the full 16 bars and I will arrange everything later. <laughs> And another thing, let me go ahead and um, let me go back a step here because I feel like this is too loud. So let me go back into the piano roll here. One thing I really like about um, AEM is it's got really good uh, velocity editing. So I'll bring this down real quick and hear how it sounds now. Oops. Go ahead and undo that. Put it here.
So I'm going to go ahead and copy, paste, and paste it all in. Let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> here I think now is a good time to set up a bus for a send so I will add um, a reverb send here let's go ahead and rename the group um, reverb send and I'm gonna go ahead and add one of my favorite reverbs on iOS and that would be let's see here EOS EOS 2 and I don't know what preset I'll run with I'll just uh, let's see I'll use a piano hall to a hundred percent and so now when we go and say we are on the sample Tron track here let me rename this to um, sample Tron So I go to effects send here, uh, reverb send, and then I can use this dial to get the send level to where I want. So yeah, we got that set up and now let's go ahead and add another track here. Let's uh, add audio layer, I think might be a good one to run with. And I'm now going to add a AU MIDI Atom Piano Roll 2 and add make it four bars. All right, so now we've got that. Uh, set up so now I'm gonna go into audio layer and choose an actual preset that I think I want to roll with here piano roll see how it sounds see what the playback sounds like.
So I just added other Desert Cities um, delay to that track. I really like other uh, Desert Cities. It's one of the best delays, in my opinion, for just getting some really cool musical sounds. I'm going to add Audio Layer again here. Let's see what other sounds out of Audio Layer we can um, find. And again, I'm going to add Adam Piano Roll 2 to the um, track just to make sure that we're scale locking our piano here. And, you know, I think the um, the AEM native piano roll is also pretty valid. So, you know, there's no reason you shouldn't be uh, recording straight to the timeline if that's what you want to do. There's nothing wrong with the piano roll at all. And another thing that I like is it kind of makes me not want to quantize so much, you know, as Adam comes pre quantizing, you got to turn it off. I don't always remember to toggle that off button. Whereas the MIDI that you record natively to the piano roll isn't um, quantized. So sometimes you naturally get that, that more loose, you know, playing style, which is, which is nice. And let's see what, and if you have not, and you've got like a big virtual instrument, instrument li uh, library on Mac or PC, but specifically Mac, um, make sure that you're auto sampling your instruments in Logic or Main Stage and sending them to Audio Layer. The results are just incredible and Audio Layer supports disc streaming and it's just, you know, really good look. So yeah, there's definitely probably some mistakes in there, but I just might leave them in in order to just um, get, you know, a more organic feel with what uh, we're playing. Since that's not going to be a constant throughout the song, just let it be what it is. Turn it down, add uh, some delay to it, put some send on it and, you know, might got something. We'll check it out in a minute. Let me add some other Desert Cities delay to it here. Make sure that we're good. Um. So one note stands out to me in here. Um, let me find it real quick. So I definitely want to change that. And this one right here is the one standing out. So let's bring this back. Um, let's see what our grid is. And bring this here.
right, so I'm going to leave that alone for now. And uh, let's see, what else can we add just for fun here? Maybe something from Model 15. I know everything in Model 15 is loud, so let me bring this way down. And we've got Adam already on it. Let's make sure that we are in scale. And we can go F, Lydian. Map it to the whites and let's find a sound we can use. back and uh let me remove that and get back to it here the wheels not being out through me y'all let me go ahead and try this again let me make sure the wheels are out this time some of that so let's um let's see how it sounds <laughs> back to there and I think that's all I'll keep and let me turn our send on reverb send add some reverb to it a little bit more it's catching this one here let's take that out All right. And I like that it also still remembers your data that's not highlighted here, which is really cool. You can always go back to it, which is really nice. So I'll let that breathe until we come back around to the next set of bars here. Oops, undo, um, let's go copy, and someone's got the wrong thing selected, wrong track selected, but uh, yeah, I did, but yeah, there we go, so that's how I'm going to keep it there. <laughs> So let me go ahead and remove this and we will copy it and we will paste it.
so yeah that's what we got um pretty nice workflow experience overall i think inside of um audio evolution mobile i think it's extremely extremely slept on um let's see here what happens if i go merge all clips okay it just merges it for the one so basically we what we could do now is we could go track options we could go freeze and now we've got an audio version of our track <laughs> If you were wondering how to freeze a track, that is how you freeze a track. So yeah, a lot of um, cool things that we are able to do with Audio Evolution Mobile. Just showing you a couple workflow hacks on how I like to work with it. I think it's very valid and very legit for MIDI editing and um, the MIDI workflow experience. I initially had tagged it just as an audio DAW and I kind of was like, oh, I'm not going to do any MIDI in it. But after seeing how it's been performing with my different MIDI workflows, incorporating Koala, Atom, kind of into the mix, and the new copy and paste features, I think that this is probably the most valid traditional DAW on iOS as of right now. I definitely recommend that you check out Audio Evolution Mobile if you want to see more videos on it. Let me know. If you have any questions about it or want to know any more workflow hacks, things like that, let me know down in the comment section. Hope you enjoyed the video. With all that said, it's iPadBeatMaking.com. Peace.